Hi, I'm Chef Tom. I'm a professional chef. I've trained all over the world. I've learned all kinds of culinary secrets, and I'm gonna teach them to you. Welcome back. So in this episode, we're gonna do nothing but basic knife skills. So a couple things we have to talk about first before we start this is actually how to hold your knife. Uh, you know, I see a lot of people holding fingers here, up here like this, uh, all different kinds of ways, but the really way you wanna hold your knife is you wanna have your, your middle finger right here so your knife kinda of balance on it. Your thumb and your pointing finger should be held right here. So like if there was a hole in between the knife, it would uh, they'd be touching and these last two fingers kind of help balance the knife out so this will be your your motion hold the knife so uh, what I see a lot of people do wrong with this is they kind of grip the knife like this so the knife the hands start shaking it's really uh, tight but in all actuality you should kind of be able to pull the knife out of your hand when you start cutting so uh, this carrot here is gonna teach you a lot about how to hold the knife and um, basic knife skills. So what I'm going to do is uh, just cut a little bit of this top off. Cut this in little pieces, make it easier to work with. Cut this in half and now we're going to begin. Now what we got to do here is you see a lot of people doing these fancy things and, and sometimes you do that but with a carrot I'm going to show you the, the really proper way how to slice the carrot. Now hand position is extremely important. So you want to put your hands down like this and you want to have, make sure your pinky and your thumb are behind the knife. Uh, obviously you get them in front of it like that, you're going to get your feelings hurt and that'd be kind of a bad day. So getting started, uh, these two fingers are going to kind of claw, hold on to the carrot. These two fingers here are going to be your guide. So what you want to do is put your knife right up against your fingers. Again, your fingers are cocked back so you don't get caught. If you have them out like this, you're going to cut yourself. So hold them back a little bit. And again, you're gonna have your knife right up against there. You wanna slice it down. And again, slice it, slice it, and slice it. Now when you're doing these slices, uh, one of the exercises I like to have people do is try to get them as thin as possible. So cut it thin. And when you're practicing this, don't try to go fast. Uh, get the technique down, speed will come with time. So again, thin, thin, then uh, what I see a lot of people doing is what I call the paper cutter and I'll put the knife down stationary and they'll cut, cut, cut. And that does the job, uh, but not that great. So make sure you have a nice smooth rocking motion on there. Another thing I see people do that's kind of wrong is actually take the knife down and just try to push it through. And again, it'll work, but you know, when you have to do one carrot or one onion or one piece of celery, you kind of hold the knife any way you want or do any technique and you'll probably get through it. But if you have to do like a thousand of these or 50 pounds of carrots at a time, uh, you're gonna have a bad day. So again, slice, slice, rocking motion on the knife. So once we're at the end of the carrot, the next part of the exercise is to take these guys here and actually begin again. Now, when you're doing this rocking motion, uh, again, be smart with it. Uh, work smart, not hard. Again, we're doing one carrot today, so this may not make a whole lot of sense for you, but if you have to do a lot of carrots, uh, this will definitely get you. So, uh, since this is so small, I want to start using the back of the blade. See, so I, I don't have to lift the blade up too much to get this cut going. Uh, but I still get the job done. I still get my rocking motion, everything is there. Again, what I see a lot of people doing, they'll try to rock up here and try to come down and you know, your hand has to come up much higher. And again, today, if you do a one carrot or two carrots, not a problem, but proper technique, I'll be back here and much less work, uh, same product being done. Again, when you do anything, there's two ways you learn it. The easy way, the hard way. The easy way is gonna be, uh, I'm gonna show you how to do this technique. You're gonna say, oh God, Chef, you know, it's a great technique, I got it. 
or you know you could try doing it yourself and your technique might be a little bit off but what's going to happen is if you hold the knife wrong your hands will start uh, cramping up you start getting blisters um, or again you could probably cut yourself uh, but you know everyone can't learn the technique the easy way so sometimes you will cut yourself uh, this will not be the easiest technique to learn but you'll get it uh, with a lot of practice before you start any knife skills you want to do is make sure your knife sharp what I usually do is take my thumb and run over the blade and what I'm feeling for is the edge is the edge really sharp is it tough on my fingers is it smooth on my fingers if it's smooth on my finger it's gonna be a really dull knife don't drag it down the knife they'll cut you but just uh, just run it across there and see how it feels so my knife is nice and sharp uh, I sharp myself but uh, I recommend that you take your knife to a professional person uh, probably at least once a year to make sure it uh, maintains a manufacturer's edge before you start any knife skill exercise what you want to do is steal a blade and what stealing does is it hones the blade. It doesn't really sharpen it, but it just puts on a nice nice edge on it. So doing this, you want to steal on an 18 to 20 degree angle and you're looking, well, you're looking for the noise. It kind of sounds funny, but it's true. You hear, hear the noise of that, how the knife kind of stings to you? That's the proper angle. Now if I go a little bit higher angle, here it's, here it's a dull thud. That's what you want. Nice singing blade. Uh, you know, you can do this several ways. I see some people go like this. This kind of makes me nervous because it's going down towards my hand and you definitely want to make sure the guards are covering your fingers. So I see people doing it like this. That doesn't matter as long as it's all done on an 18 to 20 degree angle. Uh, I also recommend that you never let anyone else steal your blade because I have a different edge on it and that could kind of dull it really, really quick. So let's continue with onion. Now, I always get the stories about people, ah, oh, chef, the onion makes you cry, what can I do? And there's nothing you can do. <clears throat> and the reason why onions make you cry is the amount of acid in the onion. Now if you have a Maui onion or a Vidalia onion, there's very low acid, if any acid, you're not going to have a problem. But this regular Spanish onion uh, could have a lot of acid in it. Now what makes it have a lot of acid is the longer it sits, the stronger it gets. So if you're in the winter time and you're getting a lot of onions or maybe even early spring, these onions have been sitting there for probably a couple months at least and kind of dehydrated and the acid in them is extremely strong and you will cry, can't do anything about it. You know, the goggle thing doesn't work or plugging your nose not work, you're just gonna cry. So <clears throat> let's get started with onion. Starting with the onion, you want to take the top off. Now we take the top off, you just don't want to take a little bit of this off. You don't want to take a, a ton of it off. You see a lot of people having a lot of scrap. You don't want to throw this stuff away. Next part you want to do is the root end. And again, with the root end, you just want to take a small amount as possible. And I do the root end second for a very important reason, is because the root right here, I'm going to cut that guy in half. And the reason why I cut that in half is when I do my further knife skills, the root end kind of holds the onion together. So I'm going to come in here, cut that right down. Let's see, cut that right in half. Now that I have it in half, I'll just peel the first layer of skin off. And you don't have any of the, the brown on there. Now cutting the, the onion uh, can be a little bit tricky, but let me show you do this. When you try to start cutting onion, it's a pretty easy process, but a couple things you have to watch out for. Uh, you want to put your palm on top of the onion, and you want to start putting slices through it. Now, I see a lot of people, uh, your hand's just on there to hold the onion in place. It's not on there. To, don't, don't push your hand down there, because try to put your, your knife through at the same time. That could be a bad thing. And the reason um, I get my fingers out, for some, if I had it like this, of course, you cut them, or for some reason, even like this, uh, you go all the way through, it would be a bad day. Because if your knife's really sharp, uh, it can go through really quick. Where it's really dull, you start putting a lot of pressure on, shoots right through the other side. So hand down, fingers out, and you want to just make nice slices even on the cutting board. Slice, slice, slice. You know, if you want to do small dice, large dice, however dice you want to do it, just make the slices uh, bigger, but you see they're very even. When you're cutting through this, you want to go like three quarters of the way through it, and towards the root end, again, uh, start the, the top end, go all the way end. Do not cut through the root on this, otherwise it'll fall apart. Okay, so now we have our horizontal slice, now we're doing the vertical slices. So, 
Again, root ends away from you, and you want to come in. Again, I'm not going go all the way through the onion. I know it might look like I'm doing it the way I'm doing this technique, but it's not. Okay, so now, I've got all my cuts in there. It looks uh, pretty good. And now I'm going to cut the onion up. Now, doing this again, you can use the same claw method. Uh, your pinky and your thumb are going to kind of be on the bottom here, holding it together. So when you start slicing it, um, sometimes, uh, especially if your knife's not that sharp, they'll start uh, blooming out and kind of makes it uneven. So uh, these fingers here, again, your fingers are here. And keep the knife right up against these guys. Now, when you get down here, you can notice that it's very difficult to to operate. You uh, know, if you start going this, it, it has a tendency to wiggle. What you want to do is just flip it over. Now you have a whole nother setup. So uh, you might have to add your lines a little bit into here, but for the most part, you should be all set. Again, I'm gonna cut here and here, here. Maybe one more off this. This part here is garbage. Don't don't mess around with that. Uh, another good tip about using a knife, I see a lot of people, they wanna take their blade and across the cutting board, and that does it really quickly. If you could do that, use the back of your blade or use a bench scraper. That works great. In this skill, I'm going to teach you how to drilling a potato. If you're doing julienne, batonette, or if you can do small dice, large dice, medium dice, it's all pretty much the same process beginning. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to take a little slice out of the potato so I can have a, a flat edge to work with. So I'm push that off the side. <clears throat> then I'm going to box a little bit for top and the bottom. I'll save these scraps for mashed potatoes or whatever else you might want to use these for. So um, I'm not going to box all the way around. I see people try to make this into one whole square and what happens if you, if you take that off, you take that off, you end up with a really small part of potato and let's just do it like this a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to make a, my initial slice and now I'm going to start planking. Now planks are either eighth inch, quarter inch, half inch or three quarter inch depending how you want to end up with it. If it's going to be an eighth of an inch, it's going to be uh, julienne, uh, you know, quarter inch, batonet, and so forth and so on. So now planking this is a little bit tricky. Uh, what you need to do, you can have your hand sitting here, uh, put the knife right up against your hands. And what I want to do is uh, look right down over the blade and I want to mark it and I want to slice it down. Make sure you cut straight down. I see a lot of people will cut down and it'll be on an angle so you don't have that nice straight edge. So I'll do a cut more here for you. Again, what you want to do is uh, mark this and just slice it down. Mark it and slice it down. Okay, now that you have your planks, what you want to do is cut these into julienne or batonet. You know, again, julienne's eighth inch by eighth inch by two inch, or a batonet is quarter quarter by two. So, getting this down now, you want to do the same technique, except you want to make this look like a square. These ends have to be square. So, I'm going to put the knife down, overlook it, slice it down. Again, put the ends on it, slice it down. So, when you're done with this, you have a square on this side and a square on this side. And that's how you make potato batonets. Practice makes perfect on these skills, so take your time. Uh, potatoes are a really easy way to start with your batonets or julienne's. Uh, if you use carrots, I t they tend to bend, they're kind of tricky, so get the potatoes down first, then go ahead and do other things like uh, carrots. Working with the garlic uh, is pretty easy. When you get the whole cloves, uh, what you want to do is put your palm in like this and just push down a little bit and that kind of cracks the whole thing up. And once you have these guys out, just kind of separate the cloves a little bit. So now there's a couple applications once you have this size. Uh, you know, you might want to slice the garlic, you might want to chop the garlic. Uh, you might want to mince the garlic. Uh, each time you do the garlic a little bit different, it's got a little bit different taste to it. And if you want to roast the garlic, that's a totally different taste. But I'm going to show you some quick techniques how to work with this garlic. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to get the skin off this guy. So you can put your knife on top here, give it a little crack, and this will help you take the skin off 
very easy. Uh, don't smash it down so hard where the whole thing breaks apart. <clears throat> now, if your application is going to be, say, kind of like uh, a fine dice, this is the way you want to do it. Very similar to the onion. Put your fingers on top of here. Get on top. Start slicing these down. That right there is your chopped garlic. Now we're going to do a sliced garlic. You know, it's the same kind of startup procedure, but sliced garlic, you probably want to use something when you're doing saute work. Uh, the small chopped garlic is great, but if you're trying to saute work, I find that they tend to burn really quickly, so uh, I tend to slice it. Okay, so I'm going to peel this garlic a little bit different this time because I don't want to smash it up. So I'm just going to go ahead and take it on the, the root end here, and I'm going to just start peeling the skin off. That tends to work uh, really well. Uh, sometimes in this garlic, you'll see a little green piece in the middle. That's a germ. Uh, some people remove that. Some people don't remove that. Uh, a lot of people tend to think that, oh, that's going to be bitter. In actuality, it's really sweet because the plants begin to grow again, so there's a lot of sugar in there. Anyways, let's get the slice in this. Uh, you know, same technique as we've done before. Put the knife on there. Mark it down. Uh, this little root end you want to kind of get rid of but all that's good to use if you don't want the green part in there let me show you how to do that you want to do is uh put the garlic down cut i'm gonna cut the end off first and what you want to do is slice this in half and there's a green part right there so what you want to just take your paring knife uh and you want to v this and you want to pull that guy out. So now that's all out, you can go ahead and slice it like normal. If you want to make garlic paste out of chopped garlic, all you want to do is keep chopping this up. Believe it or not, the garlic's really sticky. You begin to uh, hold on to your blade. Let's have it a little bit. I'm gonna take some salt, put some salt on this, and I wanna start doing this. Just kinda of start mashing it with my knife. And what salt does, the salt kinda of helps hold in place, so when I go to mash it, it stays right there. And now you have your garlic paste. This would be good for uh, finishing some tomato sauces or any place you want a nice raw garlic flavor in it.